Hey, what is up? Keith Wilson here, hopefully spreading a little bit of wealth of information. So here we are, it's a new year, 2022, and it holds a lot of new possibilities. So let's take a look at what the forecast holds for both the markets and the economy for 2022. Now, let's start with last year. Last year, the economy grew at over a 6% pace in the first half of the year, and it's on track for over 5% growth for all of 2021. Now, we won't know that for a month or so, but it looks really good for last year. And that's because of the widespread vaccine availability and additional fiscal stimulus. Now, this current recovery has certainly benefited from that. But for 2022, I think the economy, the economy may be ready for a handoff to the private sector instead of relying on the Fed's stimulus. So we have really seen a remarkable recovery since April 2020, and we have seen one of the best years of growth in almost 40 years in 2021. Now, there have been some hiccups along the way. Uh, we don't deny that. You know, with the supply chain disruptions, materials, and labor shortages, and higher prices, and this has kind of held back the economy to some degree, in my opinion. But the good news is demand is very strong as the backlogs unwind, and I would really expect economic growth to continue, and I see a low risk of a recession in 2022. Now, I believe that the economy is moving more to a mid-cycle. And as far as the forecast for GDP or gross domestic product, I would anticipate growth to be somewhere around 4%. Now, that is a lower number than what is expected in 2021, but it's still a very solid number. As far as inflation, forecasts show levels as a little above 3%, although it may still be on a you know upward trajectory the early part of the year. Now, we are seeing nearly everything in a shortage, and that has really added to increased inflation. We've seen record numbers of ships waiting at ports, a lack of materials, unfilled job openings, higher commodity prices, a lack of truck drivers, major backlogs, and supply chain disruptions. That's all added to the larger price increases. Now, I do believe these pressures will steadily decrease over the next year, and inflation, you know, I think it's going to eventually settle back to 2 2.5%, but it will likely, that's going to be a gradual process and it could take a few years. Now, despite challenges around you know, supply chains, hiring, and prices, if the demand is there, it should help drive continued improvement as businesses adapt to address all these challenges. And really, I think that leaves us with a positive economic backdrop for at least 2022, maybe much longer, despite you know, this current inflation levels. Now, as far as stocks are concerned, with a prospect for above average economic growth and earnings gains in 2022, that really points to another potentially good year for stock investors. Now, there are several other risks to watch, you know, particularly inflation. However, stocks have historically done well in mid-cycle economies, and I believe the chances are for another good year for stocks, that's going to be quite high. Over the past 60 years, the S&P 500 index was up an average of 11.5% during the 30 mid-cycle years, with gains in 80% of those years. So as you can see, stocks rose during most of these mid-cycle years, with really only in 1966, in 1977, those were the only two years with double-digit losses. Let's take a look at market cap, style, sectors, and regions that, that I think look promising. 
Now, I believe you should give small and mid caps another look for 2022, at least for the first half. And as the economic cycle matures, uh, maybe we should look at large caps. They may be better positioned with, you know, kind of balanced exposure. And I have a slight preference for value over growth because rising interest rates and higher inflation are conditions that, hey, they have historically been favorable to value sty style stock performance. Some sectors that should be of consideration, you know, that includes the beast, tech stocks, I like them, industrials, financials, real estate, and healthcare. Now, these sectors show signs of growth during current economic conditions. And I, I would lean more to U.S. equities versus international and emerging markets because of, you know, the relatively healthier U.S. economic growth outlook and the strong U.S. dollar. Now, whereas bonds are concerned, I don't expect interest rates to move much higher next year because, you know, yields for core fixed income are still low by historical standards. So returns on fixed income are likely to be flat to the low single digits in 2022. Now, not a great year, but we should see an improvement over the negative fixed income returns we have seen in 2021. But here's the thing. Bonds can still play a role within a portfolio with the economy likely transitioning to mid-cycle the need for high quality bonds hey that increases in my view and the need to offset potential equity market volatility that remains an important role for core fixed income so i believe diversification will play an important role in 2022 so when combined with equities, bonds help reduce the portfolio volatility, which makes for, you know, kind of a smoother investment experience. Now, like with any forecast, it's just that, a forecast. No one has the crystal ball that can accurately predict what will happen. All we can do and all we can go by is the current data that points to what we think will occur in the future and that's why in my opinion diversification hey that's going to play an important role in 2022